My name is Tim Matheson. I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I was involved in the sinking of the Gorilla One. I'm one of the 27 survivors. So that night, it was uh, really quite rough. The seas were very high. We knew we were adrift. We were starting to lose power. People were very seasick. And the climate, you know, in the rig was very tense. Our conditions were quite serious. And uh, we were starting to get a lot of water on deck that was tearing up our equipment. The bow would come out of the waves so high that we would trap air underneath our hull. And the rig would just stop. And the whole thing would seem to shake and just vibrate as these huge bubbles would come out from, either, from underneath both sides. We were seeing our rig being torn apart and these just monstrous waves would rise up above the deck and then come ravaging across. I saw the towmaster and I spoke with him and I said, you know, how do you feel about this storm? And he said that this was the most serious he'd seen in his 35 years experience. You could see the the fear and anxiety in everyone's eyes that uh, this was not a comfortable situation. And the towmaster turned to us and said, in the captain's recommendation, we should evacuate. The crew of the rig was mustered on the uh, top deck outside the radio room as the last few mayday calls were being made and we got there, did a, we did a head count before we went down, proceeded down, we had to go down a couple of stairways to get to the capsule davits. We proceeded into the capsule and we all knew to take our seats, and, uh, seat belted ourselves in, did another head count, uh, made sure we had some radios and we were in communication with the uh, Smith London. We secured our doors, we were ready to go, so everyone got in the crash position and we pulled the release. We started to descend towards the water and one wave hit us and drove us into the side of the rig and there was an incredible bang when we hit. Uh, we continued to proceed down. Everyone stayed in their crash position. When we got down we pulled the secondary release and we were underway. So you could feel that we had some control in these seas which really was amazing. I recall early in the voyage, uh, seeing, like looking from where I was sitting, you could see out some of the windows near the coxswain, and it just went black. Like we were being hammered by some of these waves, but this time it just went black. And then there was kind of a uh, washing machine effect, like the water and the foam swirling around on the windows, and then it just went black again. And it did that three times in a row. The capsule was being tossed around in these seas just like a little cork. We were could feel the capsule like surging up under, on these waves and, and you felt like you're being compressed because of how fast you were rising. When we got in there, uh, I was expecting it to flip, you know, any moment and I knew it was self-writing and so I expected like just a whole washer effect and when uh, we were in there, we, it, it didn't flip, you know, we, we really, we'd only ride part way up these waves and, and sort of come back down, it was very self-centering and, and that was a nice aspect of it. Afterwards, when the captain had described to us how the 60-foot wave had broken over the capsule, uh, I think that was the moment when we were completely submerged. He showed us in his logbook afterwards where he and the first mate were obviously watching us very closely during the evacuation. Uh, they made notation in their logbook. He said uh, that when this wave broke, they waited a full minute on their clock, and then they made the notation in their logbook, they're gone. They had lost sight, and they didn't know what they were going to see next, whether it would be bodies or wreckage or what. And he said it was nearly another full minute, and he said the capsule surfaced, and he couldn't believe it, but it was still under power. And he said and at that moment, he said, I know they'll make it because uh, they had taken the brunt of these, uh, of the severest of waves. In the first few minutes that after we left the side of the rig and we were underway in the capsule, we were all very concerned about our safety and we really didn't know what was going to happen next. 
uh, thought about our families at home and, and how we may never see them, how worried they were for us, and it was quite a relief to look down that hallway and, and see my family there waiting. You know, I'd thought about them a lot in the last couple of days, and uh, to see them and know that I was home for Christmas, and to see all the other families there eagerly waiting to see their their family members, it uh, was quite an emotional scene there, you know, and lots of hugs and, and everything, and it was quite a moment.